Cubism was an avant-garde movement pioneered by Pablo Picasso and George Brock at the beginning of the 20th century. Their artworks emphasized not just the surface appearance, but the structure, position, and the idea of the subject. In effect, this came to me presenting several views of the same subject within the same pictorial space. In Cubism, the subject matter is broken up, analyzed, and reassembled in an abstracted manner. Often confused with abstract art in general, or taken as a synonym for modern art, Cubism was mostly concerned with the subject matter and how to present it in an intellectually as well as a visually challenging way. Historians say the roots of Cubism are to be found in the work of Paul Cezanne, who broke the painted surface into small, multifaceted areas of paint, emphasizing a multiple viewpoint. During the last decade of his life, Cezanne's paintings became more simplified, the objects in his landscapes reduced to components, cylinders, cones, and spheres. He's often seen as anticipating Cubist and abstract art because he reduced the imperfect forms of nature to these essential shapes. Cezanne was the first to comment that, everything in nature takes its form from the sphere, the cone, and the cylinder. This idea formed the foundation for the Cubist movement. In the spring of 1907, Georges Braque visited Pablo Picasso's studio for the first time. In the years that followed, the two artists, who were quite different in both background and personality, forged a relationship that was part friendship, part rivalry, and part two-man expedition into the unknown. In this early Brock painting, we can see the influence of Cezanne, but there is a solidness to the forms that's almost like a relief sculpture. Picasso and Brock were constantly in and out of each other's studio, examining each other's work, challenging and encouraging one another. They went off to paint in different studios, but returned to compare results. Along the way, they invented a new language of painting, that shattered time-honored conventions of representation, and it was called Cubism. The first phase of Cubism, known as analytic Cubism, was both radical and influential as a short but highly significant art movement between 1907 and 1912. In the early Cubist works, the subject of the picture was usually recognizable, although figures and objects were dissected or analyzed into a multitude of small facets, these were then reassembled after a fashion to suggest those same figures or objects. In later analytic Cubism, Picasso and Brock abstracted their work so much that they were reduced to just a series of overlapping planes and facets, mostly in monochromatic browns, grays, or blacks. In their work from this period, the artists frequently combined representational motifs with letters and numbers. Their favorite motifs were still lifes and the human face and figure. The poet was painted during the summer of 1911 when Picasso was working in close association with Brock in the small French town of Surrey. Similar in style and composition to Brock's co contemporaneous painting, Man with a Guitar, this canvas epitomizes the moment in the development of analytic cubism when the degree of abstraction was so extreme that the objects in the painting are almost unrecognizable. According to some sources, Picasso was the first to use co the collage technique in his oil paintings. But according to the Guggenheim Museum's online article about collage, Brock took up the concept of collage itself before Picasso, applying it to his charcoal drawings. It was Brock who purchased a roll of simulated oak grain wallpaper and began cutting out pieces of the paper and attaching them to his charcoal drawings. Picasso immediately began to make his own experiments with the new medium. In 1912, for his still life with chair caning, Picasso pasted a patch of oil cloth and a chair cane design onto the canvas of the piece. This was a watershed moment in modern art. By incorporating the real world into the canvas, Picasso and Brock had changed the meaning of art. With this technique of pasting colored or printed pieces of paper in their compositions, the artist swept away the last vestiges of three-dimensional space. In a new phase, now called synthetic cubism, large pieces of neutral or colored paper allude to a particular object, either because they're often cut out in the shape of the object, or sometimes they bear a graphic element that clarifies the connection. While Picasso and Brock are credited with creating this new visual language, it was adopted and further developed by many different artists. 
Juan Gris's first Cubist paintings, generally more calculated than those of Picasso and Brock, appeared in 1912. He spent the next summer in Serre, France, with Picasso, and also used collage. Typical of his work is the open window. He is often called the third musketeer of Cubism, and he actually pushed Cubism further until his untimely death in 1927 at the age of 39. Inspired by the photographic motion studies of photographer Edward Muybridge, Nude Descending a Staircase No. 2 was painted by Marcel Duchamp in 1912. When it was first exhibited at the legendary Armory Show in New York City in 1913, it caused an uproar, which both outraged many people and made Duchamp famous across America. One critic called it an explosion in a shingle factory. Fernand Leger renounced abstraction during the First World War when he claims to have discovered the beauty of everyday objects, which he described as everyday poetic images. He began painting in a clean and precise style in which objects are defined in their simplest terms in very bold colors, taking cityscapes and machine parts as his subject matter. Although primarily associated with painting, Cubism also exerted a profound influence on 20th century sculpture and architecture. Cubist sculpture brought the simplified shapes of Cubist painting together with the three-dimensional modeling medium of sculpture. Cubist sculpture was mostly reminiscent of analytical Cubism in its stripping away of illusionist details to reveal the fundamental form contained in each individual subject, be it human or still life. Another noted Cubist sculpture was the Czech artist Otto Gutfreud, who was part of a remarkable flowering of Cubist art and design in Prague in the years immediately before World War I. This was the only place where there was a significant adaptation of Cubism to architecture. Several Czech artists broke up the facades of their buildings with abstract prismatic forms in a way that clearly recalls the fragmentation of analytic Cubism. The Cubists had technology on their side. Reinforced concrete was making its way into construction and enabled them to design open floor plans without needing pillars, which can clearly be seen inside Gokar's House of the Black Madonna, where a large cafe space was revolutionary at the time. The influence of cubism on graphic design seems to come from a structural design of the picture plane, including the use of the grid. The Cubist practice of reducing pictorial space and figures to hard-edged geometric forms was evident in the graphic arts. Fernand Leger grew, drew on Cubism to formulate his own unique approach to depicting the marvels of modern industrial life. Between 1918 and 1955, he made some 200 printed images, the majority of which appeared as illustrations in books and journals. Photomechanical processes allowed his works to be printed in large editions of formats, such as journal covers and theater programs. The letter forms in Leger's paintings and the graphic work for Le Fin du Monde, an anti-war book published at the end of World War I, pointed the way towards geometric letter forms. In the applied arts, Cubism was one of the sources of Italian Futurism and Russian Constructivism, as well as Art Deco, which we will look at in separate lessons. Many artists, while developing other styles, continued on occasion to produce work that was clearly Cubist. In fact, it's impossible to date the end of Cubism, since forms of avant-garde art directly responsive to Cubism emerged in the 1930s and beyond. For example, in the work of American Stuart Davis and the English artist Ben Nicholson. Cubism, a huge and varied impact on modern pictorial culture, became part of the common currency of ideas that dominated 20th century art and design.